<laughs> okay. What's up, YouTube? Close Bushcraft here. Uh, today, I just want to have a discussion about uh, primitive technology, primitive science, and just bushcraft, and how they kind of relate to each other. Um, because I've been thinking um, about how my channel has kind of progressed and how it's been moving. Um, and I kind of want to change things and kind of want to explore new things. Um, and sort of like the style of my video making, I suppose. So let's just start off with uh, primitive technology. Um, like a lot of you guys probably already know about that particular channel, Primitive Technology, that guy from Australia. Um, but I'm actually just talking about primitive technology and science in general. Um, I've actually always been really fascinated by it and just fascinated by the fact that you can acquire um, all these tools and be able to use your natural resources uh, to create things and to be able to utilize it and make your camping experience or just like a survival experience more pleasant I suppose um, and that's the kind of the whole spirit of uh, bushcraft also so most people believe that bushcraft is essentially just going camping or just going out into the woods and making do with what you have on hand and then being able to utilize the natural resources that you have around you um, <clears throat> to kind of make things more comfortable um, so like if you need a chair you know you'd be able to chop down a few pieces of wood and make a tripod put a piece of cloth over it or um, hide over it and be able to make a chair right um, <clears throat> but then I kind of thought about it a little bit more and primitive science and technology goes hand in hand with bushcraft pretty much um, and they're almost kind of like related they're they're pretty much related and so because if you think about it a lot of bushcrafters they make a lot of primitive fires um, so like bow drill sets, hand drills, friction fires, and and a lot of other things. Sure, we have all those like mo more modern ways of making fire, but a lot of the times people are using more primitive methods to create a fire. Um, <clears throat> and so, so that kind of goes into this channel that I've been watching. It's actually called uh, How to Make Everything. Um, and the guy that's making these videos. He's actually located out in Minnesota also, uh, where I'm at. Um, and he's doing almost everything that I kind of really want to do. Um, right now, he started a series where it's how to make everything, like starting like from, I think it's civilization or something like that, from scratch. And so his first video was about the Stone Age. And then he's already jumped over to the Copper Age um, and I felt like it was kind of too quick. Um, <laughs> so, so like he was only in the stone age for one episode. Um, and the, the stone age tools that he used were, um, what was it? It was like a digging stick. It was a ceramic bowl and he had a gourd also, uh, as a container. And then he, um, what was the other thing? Oh, he oh, and uh, and he was uh, flint napping. I think he went to England or Europe or something like that. And uh, and uh, he was speaking with a few people who knew how to flint nap. And uh, it was really interesting. You know, I love all of that type of stuff. And um, think about it we all use that in bushcraft also so like we flint nap and we have uh flint and steel and everything and um it's it's really fascinating but i feel like he wasn't in that stone age for very long i feel like i want to explore more of that because um although he was really good at teaching us and showing us 
the Stone Age, I feel like he was missing one main key and component, and it was fire. And he already had the fire by, by you know, like by uh, cooking up the clay pot, but he didn't show us like a primitive fire, a Stone Age type of fire. So I kind of want to mirror what he's kind of doing a little bit, but kind of do it in my own way. Um, and I kind of want to explore more of the Stone Age and then eventually maybe even get into the Copper Age because I find it super fascinating to be able to find copper or to be able to find metals, you know, from minerals or just to find float copper uh, in Upper Michigan. Super, super cool if I'm able to do that um, and then acquire metal tools. But Here's the few here's a few things that I feel like he was missing. So cordage, right? I feel like he was missing um, like a primitive cordage, but he did touch on it um, in the Copper Age. But I feel like that should be part of the Stone Age, right? So he was missing cordage, and I feel like he could have started like a primitive fire, and. Uh, what I plan on doing is I want to actually get like the stone tools and the flint and stuff first and then actually cut down pieces of like stinging nettle or uh, milkweed and then make cordage out of it and then the f from the cordage I can make like a uh, friction fire or, or fine tools and stuff and fine wood to get a bow drill set going and actually get a friction fire going. And then from there, get clay, native clay, from Minnesota, because he attempted that and it worked, right? He was able to take the, the pottery and put it in the coals and actually get it to fire and become ceramic. Um, I'm still having trouble with my Texas clay, and I'm actually still working on it. I'm gonna show you guys later. Um, or actually, I'm gonna show you guys right now. So these are my test pieces. So this right here has um, the broken ceramic pieces in here. Um, it's called Garag. And then in this, it has sand in it. And then there's also a control. So this one here is control. This one is going to be just unrefined uh, clay. And I'm going to let these dry for like a week or two, and then later I'm going to fire these. And uh, I'm going to kind of control the heat to make sure that everything gets fired good and correctly. And hopefully these don't explode on me. Yeah, so I'm going to explore primitive pottery a little bit more. And I feel like it could be useful in bushcraft situations too. Um, so say you needed some sort of container or vessel um, and if you were in a situation where you needed something like that you might be able to acquire some clay, dry it and then fire it um, and then have a container. Um, and there's many different uses for clay and containers and what you can use with clay. Um, you can help uh, create a different type of friction fire with clay also by making like a disc on the, the spindle. Um, and there's many uses for clay. And I feel like uh, that guy from uh, How to Make Everything, that channel, he didn't explore it um, thoroughly enough. And I feel like I just kind of want to do some more, you know. I appreciate his video um, and I learned a lot from it, you know. And it, I feel like it helps other content creators kind of explore the things that he's missing um, and kind of expand on that particular uh, age so like the stone age and I know that he's planning on going into like the bronze age and perhaps even the steel and industrial age I find that super fascinating um, my interviews that I did last week kind of brought more insight to what I kind of want to do for this channel um, I want to help like teach and learn new things and I, I really want to kind of document my process and then actually get information from people that know things um, more thoroughly than I do. Um, so like interviewing those two people 
on like the potter and the blacksmith last week was really really educational it was really cool and i hope it helped people uh, learn a little bit more also um, or even help inspire you guys to actually go do a few things too um, and experiment and i want the subtitle to clueless bushcraft now to be about learning and discovery so it's clueless bushcraft learning and discovery um, and uh, that's sort of like the basis of everything that I want to do on this channel. Um, and it's not just bushcraft. Like, it, it goes further than that. And, I, and Clueless Bushcraft was sort of like a, like a channel name that kind of stuck at first. But I feel like my content can become even broader. And that's not necessarily a good thing for, like, growing a YouTube channel. But... I mean, it's my YouTube channel, I can do whatever I want, right? Um, but like, I want to get into beekeeping and learn about that. I want to actually go and meet a beekeeper and film my experience with it and kind of share with you guys like what I've learned uh, with that experience. I want to go meet a blacksmith and actually learn how to make a hook or something, you know? and. Um, and I want to document that and kind of share with you guys like that. So I want that. I want my channel to kind of progress into something like that. But I don't know when it'll happen or how it's going to happen. If it's going to happen anytime soon or not. But that's kind of the direction that I want to go. Um, I still am going to do my bushcraft stuff um, when it's get, when it gets cooler. Well, it is cool now, but like once it's, it gets cold and once it's uh, winter, I like to do my camping stuff at that time. I don't like camping during the summer because of all the bugs and just how uncomfortable it can be. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, I hope you guys uh, look forward to my upcoming videos. Um, I plan on getting some more videos out and uh, oh! And if you guys actually want to follow me on Instagram, I've been a little bit more uh, active on there. Um, it's just Clueless Bushcraft uh, on Instagram. And uh, follow me um, because I post a lot of like micro content uh, daily, or at least I try to. Um, but uh, it's sort of like the in-between small stuff that I'm doing. Um, out here on the shed or maybe even primitive stuff I try to educate people um, so yeah please follow me on Instagram if you like my content please share because I'm getting so many people like message me and PM me people even like comment on my videos saying that my my uh, channel is underrated and I really appreciate that you guys like I appreciate that you guys are saying that my content is good and that I am a under, underrated content creator um, and so like that really means a lot to me and uh, what means even more to me is if you guys can share my content if it's worth sharing then share it um, so that it could reach more people so I can educate more people and for people to kind of get to know me and get to know my channel and what I do um, so that'll kind of ho hopefully motivate me to continue making more content for you guys um, because my problem now isn't like the quality of my content really I feel like it's it's um, the my problem is obscurity and that no one knows me really so hopefully um, if you guys enjoy my content share it share it with your friends family if you guys learn something shoot something in the comments below and subscribe all right thanks you guys and take care